in the olden days during Renaissance, uh, science and the art were the same. When you think about Leonardo da Vinci, right? He was equally good at both. As biologists or as virologists, which is a subset of biology, uh, you work with systems that are not man-generated. You have to come up with some kind of way you think it might work, and that's where the creativity comes in. And you also learn a lot of humility because, you know, at least for me, um, I'm probably not that smart, but you know, many of the ideas that I come up with turn out to be wrong, but in getting an answer that's not expected, that actually opens up a whole new area of discovery that you know, I wouldn't even have thought about pursuing if I didn't ask my question, however incorrect it was. And so it's, it's very opportunistic and it's very creative and you have to sit back and you have to, you know, listen to what the virus tells you. How do you talk to a virus? You ask it questions, you do an experiment, <laughs> you look at what happened and you go, oh, is that right? And then you act upon that. You ask, you ask the virus more questions after that. It's, it's like putting a puzzle together. The virus gives you one little piece at a time, and then you have to figure out how it fits with other pieces and how it fits in the big picture. So no, you don't actually, well, I guess you can't talk to it. It doesn't necessarily talk back, but it, you know, it gives you results. It gives you outcomes that you can interpret and try to figure out how to fit that piece of puzzle into the puzzle. The virus that we work on is actually a herpes virus, and when people think of a herpes virus, you know, they think of genital herpes, but in fact there are nine human herpes viruses uh, that infect um, most of us. But actually, as I tell medical students, herpes has come in three flavors, alphas, betas, and gammas. And it's the gamma herpes viruses that are associated with cancer in humans, uh, as well as in other species. So all other species, including our pets have their own gamma herpes viruses that can give them cancer. And so what a lot of those, if not all of those gamma herpes viruses do, is they basically trick our B cells in doing things that they shouldn't be doing. So normally, you know, B cells are of course an immune cell and they make antibodies. Well, gamma herpes viruses are the type of viruses that they set up their shop in B cells for the rest of our life. Some of them become memory B cells, so they circulate in our body for decades. And so because those memory B cells live forever, that is the preferred host for gamma herpes viruses. They want to get to those B cells and they want to stay in them for the rest of the life of the host. And this process is very dangerous. So in this process of growing up, uh, the B cells that have graduated through high school, <laughs> would need to go to college. And it's, it's a very dangerous time in the life of a B cell, scientifically speaking, that proliferate and mutate. And from the, the common perspective, this would be like going to a party school. Yeah, there are some good things happen, but that is also the place when things can go wrong and, and lymphomas can initiate. So the big question that, that we actually don't have answers for is, you know, most of the people will carry those herpes viruses, uh, particularly Epstein-Barr virus. And this virus causes lymphomas and uh, carcinomas of various flavors. And so the question is, well, since we'll have this virus and we have it for life, who's going to develop cancer and who won't? And right now we really cannot predict that. In most people, the infection will not lead to cancer, right? So we need to identify who is at risk. All right. <laughs> I feel like I'm on the runway. Yeah. <laughs>